Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? All right. We got Coach Hanji on the Barbarian Hour tonight. John Hanji, the head coach. Is this year five or four? It is. Five. That was a great guess, wasn't it? It was a great guess, and it's year 10 for Nick. Imagine that one. Oh, my God. Uh, I can't wait to tell you the story about the time Nick uh, spilled paint in my eyeball, paint in my house. I know it all. It I know, great I know time, story great like time. the story back of my hand. Yeah, him and uh, Keith Witt had to flush my eye with a red solo cup of water. <laughs> but John Hanji, head coach for the Ryder Broncos. Ryder is in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Did I get that right, too? Correct. Correct. Okay, so uh, it's Philadelphia area, though. You're in the Philadelphia metro area, right? Yeah, uh, we're 45 minutes outside of Philly, but we're like, it's like Princeton, Ryder, and TC and J are like in a 10 minute, 10 mile stretch of each other. That would be, so okay. Here's my, here's what, where I'm going. 2011, you guys are the host of the NCAs. That was in Philly. Yes. So that was that, that, that's, that's where I take that, right? I think Michigan yes. is usually the host in Detroit coming up. Um, yep. so yeah, usually the, the and, uh, Mizzou usually is the host in, uh, and when it comes back to Philly this time in like 2025, I think UPenn is the uh, the host this time. Yeah, which uh, it could be Drexel, UPenn, or you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Uh, a Princeton actually could be there too if they're if within yep. a striking distance of. But uh, you're the head coach for five years. How many years were the, were you the assistant to Gary Taylor? Uh, seventeen. Seventeen from twenty two thousand to twenty seven. Oh my God! That. That is commendable, my friend. Well, it was a situation where my family could make, you know, do, and, and, and I could continue to learn, and then I put myself in position to be the heir apparent, so I wasn't going anywhere. Because you know how, how there's not that many jobs in college wrestling, and there's not that many good jobs in college wrestling. So when you find one and you can make a living on it, you got to stick with it. So and I, obviously at my alma mater, it was no brain. Yeah, no question. You definitely want to do it. But um, when we look at it, you know, you you had a, a great career. You guys have had some great runs. You got all Americans year in and year out. You had your first NCAA finalist, your first, and the school's first, if I'm not uh, mistaken, correct. with Jesse uh, Delavecchia last year. Correct? Yep, absolutely correct. So that is commendable. Congratulations on that. Uh, the Thank Mid American you. Conference has been your conference for how many years now? This is going to going into our third year. So. You guys are affiliate members. Ryder came in with George Mason, Clarion Bloomsburg, Lockhaven, Edinburgh, and I know I'm probably missing one. Uh, SIU. Clarion. Uh, Clarion, right? Yeah. And SIU, right? Uh, they, they were already uh, – we they, they might have already been there when we got there. The EWL came in. The EWL, Correct. Eastern Wrestling League. Cleveland was, State. It was Cleveland State. I Cleveland State, that's right. Okay, so you guys are all affiliates. but Yes. The American Conference actually just lost a uh, big time member, the champs ever since 2013. Yes, the champs ever since 2013 has been the have been the Mizzou Tigers, and they are back in the Big 12. Yep, and um, that creates a lot of opportunity, and there's a ton of parity in the league now. And some things just went down. Central Michigan lost a a top four guy, Drew Hildebrandt. So yeah, that didn't hurt us much. That's wide open now. <laughs> it's wide. I mean, right? Because they, they I, I mean, they're the odds on favor when they got Stencil, Simon. Sure. Sure. You know, then they got uh, Love It. They got a lot of really good guys at Central Michigan. Coach uh, Barelli does a great job. And they were yeah. the dynasty before Mizzou. Right, right. So, and they're, uh, they're, they're consistently uh, – they were consistently second behind Mizzou from what I recall um, – you know, in that conference. So they're, they're the clear cut favorite, but it, like you said, there's a lot of parity and there's a lot of good teams, a lot of good kids. So when you look at it, you were an all American. Were you third? I was fourth. You're fourth. I can tell you I was third, but I'd be lying to you. Yeah. Well, you were fourth and is Doug Umbauer was third, wasn't he? Doug was third. Yep. yep. Jersey fresh. Jersey fresh. That's it, baby. <laughs> was he at 84? He was 84, wasn't he? He was an 84, yeah, yeah. I love that. He, that guy had, had swag. Had turn, lost in the semis to uh, Pasillo from Ohio State, 3-2. to two. 
guy had swag too and he just had attitude but you know you guys make your living off of guys like that yes we do yes we do i love it why why are you able to get guys like that john it's just the i think it's the personal attention and the relationships that we build with the kids um we're in the trenches with them every day you know it's it's uh if Jesse and Nick were attached at the hip this past year, and that's one of the main reasons why Jesse had so much success uh, the past two years, but particularly this year. Uh, and I was the same way when I was Nick's age with Doug and, and with those guys that, you know, got to that level because they were committed one-on-one with a, you know, a, not a personal coach, but, you know, privately in the room all the time doing training and all that stuff. So it worked out really well. So, you know, having a young coach who likes to work out, a competitive young coach like you were, now you have Nick. I mean, you got to keep bringing guys in. You know, Nick can only wrestle so long. Coach Angie can only wrestle so long. How do you keep the the staff young and fresh? Uh, Well, Nick is a uh, kind of a a, a freak a little bit. He wrestles. uh, He's still in that room probably six, seven hours a day and just wrestling everybody and helping everybody and teaching everybody. Uh, We don't. I don't, the coaches are smart. We don't let them go live, obviously, because as you get older, it's harder and the kids are bigger and stronger and you don't want to get hurt. So it's, it's just a matter of teaching them. If you want to go really hard, you bring another kid in so that you can just watch them from afar. You don't have to go crazy, but you, you give them a feel so they know what to expect as far as like the pressures and the resistance and all that stuff. But you don't go live. You just, you just kind of push them and teach them positionally. And then they grow a lot that way because they gain confidence that way too. You know, when I look at the, the hard-nosed guys you get, and obviously the Walsh. <laughs> Chad Walsh, Unbelievable. Right? Oh Unbelievable. My God. What a junkyard dog. What a freak. What a kitchen sink guy. Um, and just the best attitude out there. The hardest worker molded the culture, helped, it, you know, helped us turn a lot of things around, and just did a wonderful job for us. Just think if you would have got his brother. I know. I mean – Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Like when you, you know, you got, you get, you get guys like that and you bring them in, you coach them up and then they got these intangibles where they can, they can, he can pin anybody. Yes, he can. I mean, the guy was incredible. Is he at Davidson now? Did I have that right? He is. Yeah. This is uh, his second year now, I think maybe third. Um, But with, with a kid like Chad, you don't, we basically had to work on his basics more than anything. Um, like he didn't like to sprawl and in college wrestling, you have to sprawl. <laughs> you got to sprawl. You got to yeah. sprawl. That's the thing. Yes. Yeah. Like you said, he'll try to pin you from every position and he was getting beat because he wasn't being more, he wasn't being fundamental enough. Yeah. Once he changed his mindset on that, those throws and those moves that he was so good at actually became easier and they became uh, they, he fell into him more because he wrestled conventional and then threw that on top and it made him so dangerous, so dangerous. I love, I mean, just watching that guy, he was one of my favorite. I mean, he obviously knew that. I mean, he was just a kitchen sink guy and you never knew. He really he was. was. Get. And uh, I, I just enjoyed it, man. And he all, was always in a match. Nobody ever could count that guy out. He was so dangerous. So true. You get, you get guys like that and you, you co- listen, Knowing the sprawl is essential. You got to go <laughs> sprawl, stuff the guy's hips, push his knees away, right? Break his grip. Yeah. Not always just let him into your hips because there's guys who will pick you up that don't and fall for the gimmick stuff. That so will plant true. you, that will just, they will, they will murder you. Yes. He was losing to kids that he had, that, that weren't even in his league, but he was doing all the wrestling. He was doing all the work. He was getting tired and he was a worker. Then he realized that he can be efficient and use his strengths and the next thing you know he jumped levels upon levels because we knew he had it in him obviously he's a great wrestler but he needed to just really focus on that the first year and you know the rest is history he had a great career so when we <clears throat> when we look at you know the success you guys are built on you know i ta- i mentioned two of your guys who are all americans for you um it's not always just about all americans right and i think that uh the problem wrestling has had this conversation with john stutzman we have a results-based problem and a results-based yes. pr- approach, and I think it's unhealthy. Largely, it's very unhealthy. And um, well, well, that's the first question everybody asks: Were you an All-American? Yeah. What, no. And, yeah. The next question is: What division? Yep. Yeah. You know, so there's like this this um, this hierarchy that if you didn't get there, 
then it's like you're almost looked down upon. But we all know how hard this sport is. And you could be a four-time national qualifier, and that's a significant accomplishment because that's not easy to do. You know, you could make it your senior year, and that could be a great tournament, you know. Um, but it's just so hard. But you're right. We do value that pretty high. It's, it's, you know, and I think it's a, it's a huge flaw because, you know, you look at people's APR, that's obviously the number one thing that everybody should be worried about. Who's graduating, yeah. right? Kids Retention, graduation, that's what it's really all about. Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't have a ton of world team spots. If you didn't know that, I'm sure you did. But yeah. Yeah, I think that people get like enamored and just infatuated with the whole All-American thing. And, and listen, hey, I'm part of that. What was one of the things I, I introduced you as? You're, you know, you're an All-American. You're yeah. Fifth country we 190 190 yep yeah who won your weight uh rex holman from ohio state oh my god so hold on let me see if i got it so it was holman beat Sherritt in the final yep yep was the wisconsin guy third yeah keith davidson davidson, keith davidson. i think rex beat him in the semifinals yes yes yeah. so he rex beat, is a good family cool. friend of mine rex was massive at that year i remember Huge. him he was so big, and Sherrod was so strong. I wrestled Sherrod that year, but it was – and Davidson was big too. Um, but, yeah, those were the top three. That's crazy that I remember that. Uh, it is crazy. Troop was in that weight class too. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so wild. So, Rex, Rex is married to a uh, – his wife is from Oak Harbor, Ohio, where I'm from. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he – yeah, he uh, is a, a really good family friend. Uh, him and my brother Chad were teammates at Ohio State. That's so. awesome. Good family, family friend, great guy. Nice guy. Paramedic. Uh, the guy's lived a Forrest Gump life. He's fought in the UFC. He's has a nursing degree, is a oh my gosh. paramedic, and was in the Army, enlisted, and the guy is just like a, a wealth of knowledge and uh, just a really good guy. And he, That's he, awesome. See how he looks. He looks really good. Oh, I can imagine. He, he was looks massive. amazing. Him and his dad yeah. have been writing nutrition books and workout books. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, Rex is a great guy. So, did you wrestle Rex in the quarters, you said? No, I lost to Davidson in the quarters, three to two on riding time. Oh, my God. 107. So, so, hold on. Hold on. He beat you in the quarters, and then he beat you for third and fourth? Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Zeb. I, I just put two and two together. <laughs> Come on. Just kidding. I don't I'm even play kidding. like that. You know yeah. that. Come on. Yeah, he, and it's funny. I saw Keith a couple of years after that, and you just want to hate a guy like that because he destroyed your dreams, yeah. right? But I met him uh, probably like two or three years later with my buddy Adam Derangowski, and the nicest guy on the planet, you know. And then we talked a couple times at Midlands after that and stuff like that, and he's just a great guy, you know. So you can't hate him. You just had to hate him in the moment because he beat me. That's all. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's, that's, that is actually like healthy in the moment. That you should not like that guy. You should want to no, kick his tail, right? No. Wow. But after that, you got to respect for what he did. He wanted it as much as I did, and he just happened to, you know, come out on top. So the year before, Kerr beat Couture in the finals, and Rex Holman took third. Holman was beating Kerr by like two or three points. Really? And, he, and, and uh, it was a semis. And Kerr, like, suicide cradled them as time expired with for a two count. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what happened. Were you in that weight the year before? No, I moved up my senior year. I was a 77 all the way through until then. That is impressive. So you were a 77 for four years? Did you and register? Then, did you uh, register? I did register. I registered right before my senior year. So I went three years at 77, and then I went redshirted and went 90 my last year. So that red shirt year, you're, you're doing opens, right? They had the West Virginia Open, they had all these opens, East Stroudsburg, all these, you were probably going to them. Were you at 90 at, at all the opens? Yep, I went 90. I wrestled uh, Bo uh, Bobby Ferraro in the finals of the uh, East Stroudsburg tournament that year, and he was a two time All American for Bucknell. So crazy, man. I love I love the it nostalgia was. if you haven't figured it out. Yeah, and, and uh, so I was at. 90 my listen to this tournament my freshman year in college i wrestled 90 and then i switched to 77 pounder right because he he couldn't hold the weight and i was too small for the weight so we switched my weight class at the matt town open was uh volker from iowa state rupel from lehigh and uh barnes from oklahoma state all in the same weight class Dude. in a thanksgiving day tournament one day thanksgiving day tournament in lockheed how'd it go 
Uh, I was wrestling Rufel, and uh, I had a cradle locked. I let it go, and then I think I ended up on my back. Did you get pinned? Uh, I did not. I did not. And then Barnes majored me that year as well, so those were my two losses. Oh, my God. You, wow. Yeah, that was a hell of a tournament. And then I wrestled Matt White in the finals of, uh, of that tournament one year. My junior uh, – we were both 77. That was – he placed – 91? 91. I wrestled him in the finals and lost. So you're and the same age. Me, Are you an 88? Me and were, red? Me and, yeah, me and Matt were in the state – same state bracket. He got upset by the kid from Nazareth in the semis that I beat in the finals. So you beat a Nazareth guy in the PA state finals. Yes. It's so crazy to think that you're a PA guy because all the talk is always Jersey, this Jersey, Jersey that. Jersey, that. there's yeah. so much pride that the, the people have in the, in, in the state. I, you know what? I, I had this debate. Well, I, I brought it up and probably ran, chased my tail, but <laughs> <laughs> who, where are people more proud to be from Texas or New Jersey? That's a good question. <laughs> Seriously, Texans are like, we, we shouldn't even be, you know, sometimes they got an accent. Yeah, some Texas yeah. people got an accent, some don't, whatever. Someone will be like, we're not even supposed to be a, a member of the union because we, we did annex them. But um, they were the Lone Star Republic. They were the own, their own country after they, they gained independence from Mexico. So it's yeah. like they're big. A lot, of the, a lot of them will die on this hill. And, they, they, you know, we should be our own sovereign nation. Yeah. They say that. But, man, like, for example, Ardian Ramadani, my guy from uh, Garfield. Yep. You know Ardian, right? Yes. You know of Ardian, at least. You probably yes. recruited around his time. But, um, man, the dude loves Jersey. I think he loves a fair lawn. I'll tell you, Jersey people are insanely passionate about this place. Love it. And that state yep. tournament, I've never been to that state tournament. And, obviously, the last two years have been um, – did they get the state tournament in for 2020? I don't know. They did. So was it at uh, Atlantic City? No. Wait. Did they? I'm trying to remember. 2021 was at high schools. I know that, right? Yes. I think and they 2021 did. went all off rankings, didn't it? It did. It Ashnall, did. It was, we had Ashnall on, and he was like, yeah, they just, like, picked the top four guys in each region. and Yeah. We so that what that does is Coach that really went, screws the yeah. younger kids over. Yes, it did because you didn't have anything to go off of, and, it, and the coaches just threw up their kid and they voted for him. And then if, if you made it, you made it. If not, you were done. Ah, I don't like that at all. But I, I get, I get yeah. you had to do something though. I get yeah. that, that nothing was unacceptable. Yeah, Absolutely. did they get the 2020 tournament in? I think they did. I think they did because they canceled. My kid had kid states after that, and they canceled that. But I think they got the tournament in. Okay, did you win state in Pennsylvania at the Giant Center? No, where'd at you the win? old at the old um, Hershey Arena? So the Giant Center is down the way a little bit. The Hershey Arena is actually more in the park, and gotcha. it's an older. It's the hump. It's got like the uh, the dome almost. It's like a, a rectangle dome. Um, old school arena. Old school. They used to have team states there and everything, and states there. Gotcha. So the, when did they go? Do you know when they went to uh, mm. uh, Giant? 90s probably, right? Obviously 90s. Yeah, I would guess. I would guess. I could have swore Cole at wrestled. I think he wrestled in the Giant Center. I think Cole When did at, he graduate? He was 93, 92, 93. Yeah, so it was definitely between 88 and that, and that time for sure. Yeah, it's just wild for me to think you're a PA guy. Where? What high school did you go to in PA, John? Quakertown, Quakertown High School in PA. Where is Quakertown? About 20 minutes south of Allentown. It's an exit off the north. Where is Allentown? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Allentown and – well, Quakertown's probably about 30 minutes outside of Philly. Okay. And Allentown's obviously another, you know, maybe almost 45 minutes or so. But it's northeast extension, so you take the Blue Route to the northeast extension and you go straight up, and we're right there. How far is that from where you live now? Uh, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so not far. And I live in South Jersey in Marlton, and it's uh, like 10 miles outside the Philly, uh, outside of city, but it's like a 40-minute ride to work. So. 
That's what Jersey does. They drive oh far. They God, live in the town. Drive far. Was it the Garden Parkway? Is the big one I always hear people talk about? The Garden, the Garden State Parkway is one of the ones. I hear yep. things. I hear things, man. <laughs> They're not super flattering things either. No, 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 no. You don't it, want to get stuck on that parkway. It's a nightmare sometimes. I think uh, Ayers was just going somewhere, going to recruit. And the, yeah, the, and he was flooded. The water, the whole water. The, that was 295, though. That wasn't the, the parkway. The parkway's real narrow, and they all say – nobody knows the, the the towns you get off. They just name the number of the exit. Yeah, I, I live off of exit 105. <laughs> so That's all they said. It's crazy. It's so crazy. And what, what's awesome about Jersey, too, is it's like it's got very distinct regions to it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> you got to watch Michigan. where you're asking somebody where they're from. Yes, there's a Mason-Dixon line in the state of New Jersey, and it's clear across the center of the state because north is completely different than south. Where is Blairstown? It's north, isn't it? Blairstown is way north. Now, they belong down south because they're in the middle of nowhere. But you get, you know what North Jersey, and if you get, the closer you get to New York, the crazier and busier it gets. Yes. So Garfield, where my college teammate Arden Ramadani is from, is right. I mean, it is right outside yeah. of Manhattan. Yes, and it's insanely busy up there. And I think he, like I said, he lives in Fairlawn now. He works for the New York, New Jersey Port Authority. Yep, yep. He, he actually works at the uh, Freedom Tower, and sometimes it, it's uh, the Newark Airport. And it's um, so busy up there. It, well, it's crazy, right? And uh, everything's a toll. That's the big thing. He picked me up. I was doing some stuff out there for the uh, C three compound stuff at Bergen right. Catholic. And he picked me up, man, and we were zipping all around. I mean, my head was spinning. This dude's in and out of tolls. I'm like, where in the hell are we? It was wild, man. But, uh, you know, I like the, the passion and the pride of the Jersey people. And, and that state tournament, I got to get to that state tournament. At some I'll point. tell you what, it's, it's an experience because there's some really good kids, as you know, but the fans, the coaches are all educated at a really high level when it comes to wrestling. And it's insane. It, from the first whistle to the absolute last. And they run the finals. They mimic as much as they can the NCAA finals. So they do a real nice pomp and circumstance for all the kids. They walk them out. They, uh, they honor them the right way. It's, uh, it's pretty significant. Because it's, it's a one state champion uh, state, you know, whereas yeah. Pennsylvania's still two. There's some other states that are three, four, five, you know. But they're a single state tournament. And – the parochials are permitted to wrestle in it, which makes it even harder. Unbelievable. I love it. I love yeah. it. Did, hey, didn't Molinaro beat Burroughs in the, the state finals? He did. He did. The, but next year, Jordan won it. Yeah. But, but Jordan, Frank, and him were different weights that, the next year, right? Yes. 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 Isn't that crazy? I mean, that, those two in the that finals? Is, yeah. That is incredible. Hey, the guy who was in that uh, – he was in a movie, a pinned movie. He was in like a real. Oh yeah, yeah. He wrestled for Hunter and Central. That guy was a state champ, I think, wasn't he? Yes, he was as a sophomore, and then he never wrestled again because he, he went to the acting career. Went to Hollywood. Alex, it was Alex something. It was um, he wrestled for Hundred and Central. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Um, I, the these, the, do you know the who the Paul brothers are? The guys who were just boxing. One boxed Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. One yeah. boxed. Uh, Tyron Woodley and the other, the one almost killed Ben Askren. Yes. Although Ben Askren might have taken a bit of a dive um, and maybe didn't train and just got a paycheck. But that <laughs> oldest one, uh, Logan Paul, I, listen, I'm, I will – this is a hell I'll die in. Logan Paul was a freak. Logan Paul was fifth in Ohio in our big division. Really? He lost in the district finals to Abinator, uh, to Dom Abinator. Yeah. And then I videoed one of his matches when I worked for Flow Wrestling, and I have one of one of Logan Paul's matches are on. It's on Flow Wrestling. Really? And he lost. And he lost, but he came back and placed. But his high school coach was Jake Percival. Really? Logan Paul. Oh man, you're 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 getting all the tidbits. You ready? Logan Paul went to West Lake High School. Their only state, their last state champ was a guy named Doug Dake. That's uh, now lives in New York, right? There you go. That's who yeah. that is. That's Doug was crazy. Doug and his wife were all Americans at uh, Kent State. She was a gymnast, and Doug was all American at I think one seventy seven. The hell of a bloodline. There you go. So yeah, I mean it, it's crazy to think, but the Pauls are they're phenomenal athletes. 
they, I mean, to take, to, you know what it's like to place in the big schools at Ohio. Come on. That's no, that guy's, that guy's for real. And, and I was fifth in division two in Ohio and I was a 500, slightly over 500 college wrestler. Right. And everyone's like, Oh, he didn't wrestle D one. I didn't even ask Greenlee. I had Greenlee on last week. Um, and cause that's the big claim that he came out or was going to come out. And I, I think they probably get press calls about him, I, but I just don't care. But <laughs> I, the dude is uh he's legit i mean if you're fifth in ohio you can be on any of the d1 absolutely rosters. there's no question absolutely yeah you've earned so, right there did, did sure. you know that about that guy he was a state I had no idea yeah and an all-state no tailback as well so the guy's an athlete that is an athlete to be the an guy's an athlete guy. and he's big too he's big he was like a 182 so yeah. he's big so um what i'll say about the one brother though the dude who uh beat woodley and uh, i don't think he beat woodley but whatever um, but I don't score boxing matches, but, um, and the one who knocked, uh, ask her now, I think he's on like probably the best stuff you can be on whatever it is. Like the, what bonds, whatever bonds was on, whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, mean, if you look at him, he's, he's big, dude. He is big. He's big and he's powerful. Yes. And and they're millions. They don't. They don't have that much background in boxing, but they're punching really, really hard. They're punching really hard, actually. Yeah, they are. They're punching really hard. Like, dude, when he hit Askren, Askren earned that 500 k. <laughs> yes, he, he took did. A shot, man. He definitely did. He took a shot. I mean, I don't want to take that shot. You know, I no, like brain what? cells. They're cool. You know, brain yeah. cells are cool. But <laughs> um, hard to come by. that guy who, that guy, the actor, Alex, man, I can't think. I'll have to Google his name. Um, he was legit though. And he was actually, when they had him wrestling, um, all, that wasn't like watching vision quest. No, 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 no. That was legit smooth. wrestling. He was smooth. Yeah. Uh, they did a he good job with really the good. box catcher. Don't you think? Say it again. They did a good job. They did a good job with the wrestling scenes in box catcher. Uh, they, they, I agree. I would agree with that. I think that like Channing that Tatum was a good looked movie. natural. Channing Tatum looked natural. And then you had like JD Bergman. I think Reese might have been in there. They had yep, a bunch yep. of our, you know, a bunch of our senior level guys were yeah, actually and in there. Th- because the message was so powerful, they had to have legit wrestling for people to kind of buy into it. You know what I mean? At least from from inside our culture. And, and yeah. I think they did they did just that. Ru- Ruffalo looked good. Um, yep. Channing Tatum looked excellent. I mean, they did a great job. They didn't look they didn't look fish out of water. They looked like actual wrestlers. However, they did it. How great. many takes it took? They did a great job. How far is that from you, Fox Catcher? Well, I know it's a neighborhood now, and it's not a. Uh, Villanova is probably maybe like forty-five minutes. Yeah, so that's a huge metro area, you guys. It used to be, yeah, it used to be a um, a ride from Ryder. Like I, Darren Gowski was the first one to go there from our team, um, and train under Humphrey's dad, who was a coach at that time, and before Strobel was. At, at Foxcatcher, and then Adam used to go there and train with Valentin Jordanov, and um, and uh, there was one other, there was one other, there was one other, um, and then ended Humphrey, and then we would start traveling with Adam, and we had some crazy experiences there, some just crazy, crazy experiences. Can there. you share any? Is there anything you feel comfortable sharing that that maybe you saw John Dupont do, or you anything that you think that that, that the uh, fans out here would like to hear? Uh, not, not really. It was just what I can share is that every time he came around, we just got quiet and we just dispersed because so every time didn't. John Dupont came around, you guys like did they tip you off or like, hey, this dude's a weirdo? Did they tip a little you? bit? Like I would, I would know. I I knew Adam really well. I'm still really close friends with Adam. And, and Wait, just, was Adam the one who beat Burnett in the uh, round of twelve? Yep. It Put, was it zero, zero. Put it zero, on him. Put it on him. Zero zero going to the third. Yeah, eight nothing at the end. Eight nothing. He said he majored him. He is tough. He is. Uh, I'll tell you right now, he did that to a lot of people. He did that to a lot of people. Got to get off the mat. Yeah, I get off the Adam, mat. Adam's one that's so hard to get off the mat on. He did that to everybody his senior year. He, was he third, lost to Roselli. He, he lost to Roselli in the quarters, and then he changed his strategy in the third place match, and he, and he beat Roselli. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So he tipped you off. He was like, was he living there? No, no, no. He was, he was, uh, he was commuting back and forth. Like his one senior year, or the red the year he redshirted, we didn't see him. He was, he 
if he was a class, he was a class. And if he wasn't, he was a Fox Control. We're training with Jack Kubo up in Easton. Jack Kubo, that's another awesome one. Another, yeah. ma- another maniac. Uh, <laughs> not, not like DuPont's a maniac, though. But um, when he would come around, did he know your guys' names? And would he no. try to engage you, or was he just aloof? Just totally aloof. And he would, like, try to make jokes and be funny, and it was just awkward. You know what I mean? So we were like – we just got our stuff and we just moved to the other side or we just left. We just, we were, we were in, we kept quiet and we were out. How big was that facility? Two, three mats, three mats, three fr- regular freestyle, blue, yellow, red mats. Uh, the weight room was in the front when you walked in, it wasn't big. Um, but there was a long hallway that led to his office. I was never in there. Uh, but the facilities were just phenomenal. It was really nice. Rico Ciparelli was training there with Schultz at that time. Um, that was a story that I saw. Rico and Schultz were done practice, and the, the length of the three circles, Schultz would just start running, and Ch- he would just keep running until Ciparelli actually passed him. He had to lap him and pass him. And Schultz probably made him do it for like 30 minutes one day. And he's like, you can't stop till you pass me. And Schultz just kept going. Schultz, <laughs> he, was, he was insanely good. Did he ever choke you out? Did Dave Schultz ever choke John no. Angie out? No. You knew though. No, I never. He never got my hands. He never got his hands on me, so I never really actually wrestled. So that was that was good news. <laughs> that's the that's the only reason I didn't get choked out. <sighs> he choked big guys out. He choked. He choked Royce out. Yep. Alger. He yep. Po- He choked real. He choked his brother out. I think. I think he did, and his was brother's he... strong. <laughs> you think Mark like, Jones is strong? Strong freak. Yes. Like, still grab and crush people. Yeah. I bet you he choked. I wonder if he choked out Chade, because Chade was there. Danny, Dan Chade. Yeah. And he was big, and he was strong. Was Chade 198? Chade was 220. Oh, my God. Listen to this. I wrestled in the, uh, the, the New York Athletic Club tournament one year. Chade, McCoy, myself. That was the weight class. There was five people in the weight. <laughs> did you have to wrestle all they round robin you no they uh we did a straight up tournament somehow and then uh carrie and i wrestled in the semis and i won that time but carrie's like three and one against me in freestyle um so that year thought, 93 he was at 190 in 93 when you were an all-american he was a freshman and didn't place i wrestled him in the matt town quarterfinals so I've got this Carrie McCoy kid who's a stud freshman coming out of high school. Is he from Long Island? Long Island? Yeah. Yes. I'm in the finals. I'm, I'm ranked like seventh or eighth in the country at the time. And I've got this kid. And it's, it's three, three, two, I think, with like 30 seconds left. I'm winning. And he shoots. And I bump him to his back. And I take him down to his back to beat him. And then the next year he was a heavyweight and went what two national titles? He won two in a row. Guys. Well, no, he he had the like crazy long win streak, and then Justin Greenlee upset him in the semis one year. Yes. yes. He won next year and then he was gonna win again. Yes. And he got beat by Justin Greenlee, who's like a like a basketball player. Not yeah, like he was Joel. So Not tall. like Joel. No. <laughs> Nothing like Joel. No, no. Completely no, no, no. different frame. Yes. Yes. So he was at that weight that Rex Holman won. Yes. That the he weight won. where you were fourth. Yes. He That's was at that weight. Crazy. I bet you we could go look back and you might have been in a situation where you almost had to wrestle him. I'm I don't remember where he was in the bracket. He was he was seated, but I don't remember where. I think he might have been on the bottom bracket. Were you seated in ninety three? Fourth. You were so you wrestled to your seed? Yeah. Davison yeah. was the five. Oh, he was the five. Who was three? I think was it Troop? Maybe no. Um, I think the two seed was Sher. I think the three might have been Oganesian from Nebraska. Okay. Big Twelve, Nebraska. Yes. That is wild, man. To think about that because I I remember that. Like, who was the Northwestern guy? Mm, they had a guy too. They had an All American too at ninety. That year, they you sure because Kloiber <laughs> plays from Pitt. Who all placed it that way? We got to, I got to look at that. We got to look so, that up. We'll catch, I'm going to look, I'm going to Google that while we're talking. But okay. um, it went 
Holman, Sharrett, Davidson, me. I think Kloiber was fifth. Um, who the hell else was in there? Uh, Joel, Dale Bud was um, eighth from Lock Haven. Here we go. I got it. You ready? I need six and seven. Rex Holman. Trooper Ohio six. State, Sherritt, Keith Davidson, Wisconsin, John Hangey, Ryder, Jeff Clover, uh, Pitt, Dan Troop, Troop, Iowa State, John Curtis oh, of George John Mason. Curtis, George Mason. Dale Bud of Lockhaven. Yep. What was Kerry McCoy seated there? Hold on. Bud was unseated. All you guys were seated, but Bud. Oh, never mind. Kloiber was not seated either. I wrestled Bud in the second round. Okay, hold on. Here we go. I'm going to just look at the bracket. I want to see what McCoy did. Dude, it's like awesome to look at this. Like, have it right at your fingertips. It's amazing, right? So, it is. That, what are you, uh, wrestling stats? Uh, yep, wrestling stats. It's pretty amazing. That's an amazing so, website. The, they didn't put the one seed. Oh, that's the Conti. Never mind. They didn't put it up top. Like they, it was weird. Right? Hold on, let me look. Let me look. No, they didn't put it up top because Holman came out of Holman actually beat Kerry McCoy second round thirteen three McCoy McCoy was in the four seed spot. What we would or no, he wasn't even in that. Jerry McCoy was in that from Cal PA. We were close to wrestling because I was Davidson and I wrestled. Oh, Emilio court. Collins is a stud. He's a stud. Yeah, uh, Rex beat him in the quarters. Then he, he beat Davidson in the semis. Troop beat got beat by Sherritt. Yep. You lost to Davidson twice. Davidson twice. He beat you in the quarters, three two on the riding time one oh seven. Was that what it was? Yeah, unfortunately. Not, not to bring it up again. <laughs> but that's amazing. Yeah, and then I mean there were some really good. Who was guys. the Northwestern guy? Who was in there? Less the freaking gutches. Let's go. This is in the way. Dude, crazy. hold on. Hold on. 190 when you were a senior. You ready? Here oh, we yeah. go. Listen to these dudes. You ready? Dan Henderson. He was an Olympian. Hold on. Right. I'm not done. Dan Henderson, Keith Davidson, John Hange, Dale Budd, Emilio Collins, world champion Les Gutches, Rex Pullman. Hey, Henderson won. He unified some belts. He unified belts. He won multiple weights. And, and, um, yeah. <laughs> and I want to say it was pride. He's won everything. Hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. Kerry McCoy. Hold on. Kerry McCoy wrestled Jerry McCoy first round. From yeah, California. yeah, yeah. Cal, California PA, right? Yep. John Curtis, he was an All-American. Dan Troop, Keep Iowa on. State All-American. Uh, hold on. We're not done here. Tyrone Howard of Bloomsburg. Strongest guy I've ever wrestled. Joel Sherritt. Another strong Oh, my guy. God. Another one. Listen to this one. This one's going to blow your mind. Jeff Monson of Illinois. I had to beat him to place. Dude, have you seen him lately? Yes. He's a tatted up freak. And yeah. I think he denounced his citizenship and lives in Russia. Yes, yeah. No, because no, no. He's, he's like a Pacific he, Northwest guy, I think. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then Oganese. He beat me at the Midlands. He beat me at the Midlands, and then I beat him to place. Oganesian did not place. No, and he was a two-seat. Oh, my God. They have him in the two-seat. They have him slotted. No, he was a six. Oh, Andy six Foster of Oklahoma was the two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. There was a tough that, kid. From that was Navy a bracket, you know, dude. You were in a freaking yeah. bracket. That was a bracket. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't have to wrestle all of them. <laughs> oh, my God. So you had to wrestle. So you, you lost to Davidson. Um, you beat Dale Bud. And I had to drop down, beat Monson. So my next match beat... was Curtis. Oh, my God. So I, wow. I dropped down, beat Monson, and I had to beat Curtis, and then I had to beat Troop, and then I got to Davidson and beat him. Oh my God, dude! Yeah, you beat Monson six three. Yep. Oh my God, Monson's huge still. Like when you see him, he's, oh, he's mad. Was he a freak yeah. then too? Was he built like that then? He had long hair. He was he was built like that, but he was he isn't as big as he is now. I mean, he is massive now. But he was 
strong, quick. Um, it was a dog fight. It was definitely a dog fight. You were in a weight. Hanji was in a weight, man. Holy smokes. What a freaking weight. I love That's it. You awesome. probably never sat back and really reflected at the weight as my gosh, because you didn't know some of the guys were in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. It's nice to hear that. Isn't that fun? It is fun. Isn't it this is fun? fun? Isn't this fun? <laughs> Hinge, come on. It's fun when you hang out with Zach. Always fun. I got oh, not always. But uh so you know, you you uh you got the job done and, and I think it's fun to sit and reminisce about this because you probably don't really think about it much. You're thinking about getting dudes to graduate, APR. Yep recruiting obviously recruiting maybe even you know it, it comes co with those other things because you always got to have horses in the stable right and then right. just fundraising there's just so much on your plate what's what what is fun about it anymore as far as a head coach are you so indoctrinated into the system that is just like part of you what what is fun about it anymore the relationships you, you develop with the kids there's no question like every day you have a, a kid what Let's take the freshman class. You come in, you're in charge of molding them and making them do what you want them to do when they're supposed to do it and be responsible, be accountable, all that stuff. And it's a full-time job. But that's fun because you see them at a starting point and you want them to get to a higher point and you see them progress and they become these kids that are accountable, are responsible, and are you know hardworking kids. And it's so rewarding. And it's more rewarding now that I'm older um, to see kids succeed, to see, you know, help them get past hurdles in their lives and stuff like that. So to me, as I'm getting older, that's, that's the most rewarding thing of my job. I mean, when you work around young kids like that, you, you stay young because you're young at heart and they make sure you stay young because they change and every year they evolve and they, they're different, you know, but it's, it's, um, it's a lot of fun being a part around those kids. And, you know, having Nick and my younger assistants, it, it's just, it fits the mold. So this is year 22 for you. 22. Am I? Well, I was at Ryder. So I was at Ryder in 1988 as a freshman. I stayed there till 97 because I got my graduate degree. And I went to Bucknell for three years to be the head coach. And then in 2000, I was back. And this is my 22nd year since I came back. So with the retirement systems, right? You split retirement systems there by three years. Did you get any retirement years for the grad school? Uh, no, 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 no. So I don't think it works. I'm not sure how it works that way, Zeb. If, um, because it's a, it's, a, it's a union thing at Ryder. Gotcha, gotcha. So, my so it's thing. not like – so it's a, and it's a TIA thing. So I don't know if I got that in Bucknell because I had the TIAA, but I don't know if I got the the credits towards that. You see You'd what I'm saying? You'd have to buy those years. You'd have to buy yes. those years. I mean, obviously, you know where I'm going with this. Yes. Is 30 the threshold for you to retire? Is 30 years? Well, my son is a sophomore in high school. So you could you could actually – you okay, so let's say that's six more years. Let's say you – Get no, him through high school. Seven, seven more years. years. Yeah, seven more years. So that's seven more years. You're going to get your kid through, through college if he, de if he des uh, decides to go, right? And then evaluate from there because, I, you know, this is a job that you can't do forever and be successful at the highest level. I mean, there, you can, there's ways to do it, but you got to be a, maintain a valuable contribution to the, to the staff, to the school, all that stuff. So in my opinion – I'll be looking maybe for some, you know, some other avenues at that time. You know, and that's the, the big thing. Nobody wants to talk about it or think about it, but everything goes like this now, man. It's crazy. I got two kids. I got a five and a three-year-old. Yeah. And it's just like, man, how, just how fast they grow and they develop and all these different so, aspects of life, man. And it just flies. And the kids, so, when you have kids, because you have a daughter too, don't you, John? I do. She's a junior in college. We're at? Kane University in Union, in Jer North Jersey. Yeah. Okay. How far is that from you? Uh, about an hour, 15 minutes north. That's not bad. Nope. Not, not at all. So, you know, you got all these, these stressors, right, of life that you got to take care of, but nobody really wants to think or, or address like, ah, when do you retire? And what was crazy is I would always be like to Joe McFarlane, you know, I'd always be like, hey, how much yeah. longer you got, right? And the year he retired – I interviewed him and he didn't tell me. And then he told everybody else after I interviewed him at, in Cleveland. And I'm like, what the heck, 
man. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not even a, like that though, but I don't even, I'm not even like, I got to break it. I, I mean, that that's okay. No, but, uh, no. Right. Like but I, it's just, it's a young man's game though, right? It is. It absolutely is. And it's like, I'm positioning myself because you know, as well as I do, the kids, because you have kids, life goes faster. And I've, I've agreed to, I, I, I got the job. I'm teaching a graduate class this spring. So I'm trying to like develop that second half, you know, and I've got seven or eight years to do it. So I'm trying to develop that second half so I can position myself to maybe be an athletic director somewhere or some, yeah. some other administrative type position, because it is a young man's job. And, and if you can't do it, you got to make sure you get somebody that can. And Nick is a guy that I would love to see do exactly what happened with me and Gary. Get to a point when he's ready to retire. I retired, or he retired. I stepped in, and same thing with Nick. When I get to that point, Nick comes right in. Yeah, I mean it only makes sense. You, and the thing with you is, man, it's your alum, your alum. It's, it's your alma mater. Yep. You want to, you want to leave it better than you found it, right? I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Everybody who, who loves their their school, that I mean, that's that's the. I feel that's the obligation you have, right? Like, I agree. That that's agree. just my opinion, but I mean. I think that that's a big part of it. Gary Taylor, Gary Taylor. Uh, I mean, geez, oh, pizza. first off, I had a lot of respect for Gary Taylor. What was crazy is I was, you know, I was independent contractor for flow wrestling and it was almost like they ignored the guy. It was yeah. real weird. And I know it like made Nick mad. Right. It did. I don't know if it made you mad. Cause I think you're just like head down, keep doing what you're doing. Right. But, um, it was bizarre to me. And Willie Saylor was like, Hey man. And I, and I, I recognize that, you know, that I recognize that. And I always Absolutely. would be like, Hey, let me talk Absolutely. to you. Know, I was always trying to talk to people and I, I just don't roll like that. And I came from, you know, I came from Kent state. So I yep. get the mid majors. I love the mid majors. The mid majors are my bread and butter. Anybody can go interview the. Absolutely. Big time guys. Right. I mean, Oklahoma state guys, they can go ask John Smith questions. Um, but I, I, you know, I love George Mason. I love all the, you know, I love the PA schools. I love those schools because that it feels like, well, first off, that's where I'm from. Right. Secondly, I know more about them and it's harder to be just a casual fan of them. You really got to try, right? Yeah, you got to dive in and dig and get, and get committed to learning them. Yeah. If you got the big 10 network, you can be the best casual fan ever and know all these guys. Cause you're, you can sit on your couch and watch it and not have to, log into something or buy a service because if you got the big so network, true. you're there right so that's, i think that's where my love for those uh you know your guys mid-majors and the smaller schools are you are you the only division one sport at rider is wrestling no every sport at rider is division one but and so we have, have 20 sports all yep. are d1 all d1 they they compete we're in the mac obviously as you knew earlier but they're also in the mac it's a m-a-a-c um and then that's and except for field hockey, I think is in the NEC because the MAC doesn't have that. So, so it's a uh, it, you know it's a northeast region type of conference of very like schools like um, St. Francis, uh, Quinnipiac, Iona, um, schools of that nature. You know, there's like 13 of them there. Uh, it's it's a it's a basketball strong uh, conference. You know, there's some uh, Rick Patino is the um, the head coach at Iona. Oh, okay. So. Uh... That's funny. Quinnipiac's all the uh, all the all the uh, polls are Quinnipiac. Yes, yes. They're big political political science and polls and, and polls. Yes. So that's funny. Okay. So I, yeah, when it was funny because the MAC M A A C was the actual host of the 2011. The, yes. They were the league affiliate host. Yep. And that and was we when you the, guys were in the what were you in then? We were E C W A at that time, I think. Mm-hmm. No. We were in the uh, CAA. That's it. With the Old Dominion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hofstra. And interestingly enough, we are the only institution in the MAAC that hosts uh, sponsors wrestling. Wow. We need to change that. Yeah, 13 schools. That's crazy. I, I did not – that because I didn't even know about that league until you just brought I – mean, because I, I yeah. glanced across some of the most – obscure things you could ever imagine on the internet. I, I did not, cause I never even looked into it when you, when they yep. were, cause they were branded all over that NCA is that 2011. Yep. But what you guys have done, there's pretty amazing, right? Like how you're able to be competitive is right. What is 4,000 students? Uh, a, a little less. I'd say 3,500, 3,500 small private school, right? Yes, sir. 
small private school, Jersey, just in the, the Philadelphia Metroplex, right? Yep. But it's in Jersey. I don't know if people understand how states and borders work, but you're actually seven in New miles, Jersey. Seven miles over the border from PA. Seven miles over the border, but, but it takes 45 minutes to get to Jersey. <laughs> well, Philly's a little further. Philly's a little further, but it's but like how, that's how far? Remote. How far? How far from Philly? How far to get? To, how, how long? 45 minutes. How many miles total? Probably 20, 25, maybe. Okay, that's not as terrible as I. I'm, I'm kind of painting this picture that it's probably a little more terrible than it is. It's <laughs> not that bad. But uh, talk about Gary Taylor and, and what Gary Taylor meant to you as a mentor. Because I believe he was the coach that he was your head coach the whole time. He recruited yes. you. Yep. And, you know, you had to leave for, for a couple of years to get, gain an opportunity to get some experience. But what has Gary Taylor meant to John Hangey in your life? I mean, he's given me every opportunity I've ever wanted in my adult life. You know, he recruited me to, to wrestle for him. Uh, he trained me to be an All-American. And he gave me a chance to be a grad assistant and then on his staff. Then when I left, like you said, to get experience, he, he pushed me to go get the experience because he knew that's what I, that's what I wanted. And he didn't want to let me go but because I was – I bled rider because that's where I was, you know, went to school, but he, he, um, he pushed me there. And then when I came back, I came back for the commitment to him and to rider. And that's really what kind of, and my family really benefited from that because we were able to raise our kids here and be an assistant coach for 17 years. And I can't tell you how much I learned in those 17 years to be ready to be in the position that I'm in as of 2017. So everything that I've been afforded in my adult professional life is because Gary Taylor and I can't say thank you enough to him. He was in my office today. He comes by like three times a week and he just sits down and we talk. It was, it's crazy because a lot of coaches are like waiting for the head coach to retire. I never, ever once got that vibe from you, man. I never, yeah. ever was like, oh, when's Gary going to be done? Or it was never, yeah. never got that vibe from you. Never heard talk of it. You know, and that's tough because I think a lot of guys get super frustrated. Like, you know, J-Rob stayed around forever, right? Yeah. A lot yep. of these guys stick around. And some of them, you know, they, they stay around a really long time. Did you ever feel that with Gary or were you just like, you just, you just, the guy was so endearing and he meant so much to you. You probably wanted him longer, right? Yeah. Well, I knew it was his program. I mean, he was the one that made it what it is, you know, what, when we took over and there, there were times where it was like, I knew he was getting up there in age and stuff like that. But at the same time, I would never have said anything to him. I've never have recommended or, you know, tried to say, Hey Gary, when are you getting out? You know, all I did was kept putting myself in position I kept making sure that he was getting what he needed to be successful so that we could be successful. You know what I mean? At that point, he's, he, he was like, what, 68? But he was third all time in wins. How do you just get a guy to get out? Like, you can't just say, okay, you need to leave because you're not good anymore. Well, his last year, he had 13 wins as a team. I mean, and, and that, so that was 2016. Chad Walsh and Ryan Wolf were all Americans, for God's sakes. Yeah. I mean, that's he the went way out with a bang, didn't he? He went out with a bang. That's way, yeah, that's the way you should go out. You know, that's, that's called what you fading off into the sunset, man. Like, that's amazing. Send them out the way send them out the way he wants to go out. And that's kind of what we did for Gary, you know? Yeah. And I and I remember there were people would say weird things. I go, No, I think this guy's still effective. No, I'll tell you right now. I think guy's he's good. in that room. He still walks around just kind of looking and watching. He still has great input. I'm telling you, it's just, it's a young man's sport. So the energy level gets the bestie after a while, but yeah. he knows so much wrestling and he's got such a great way to teach it. So he was so valuable. And, you know, and when he decided to retire, we lost a great coach, but he still supports the program tremendously. What I like about you and coach Andersy, two very different guys, <laughs> but what I do <laughs> like about you guys is your end game, your end game and his end game was, he was Kent State. Your end game was Ryder. You're yep. your alum, right? Obviously, you can throw brands in there, whoever you want. Sure, sure. Anybody who's at their alma mater coaching, yeah. So, you know, Escobedo, right? Yep. Um, 
throw a couple more out there. You, you get it. Uh, uh, Garland, right? Garland, he's yeah. alum. So, you know, like, just just to name guys. But that I think that's a lot of your guys' endpoints because that's where you want to be. That's where I want to be. I'm what's as happy like, as I can be. What's that like not always, like, looking up to the next step? What's that like for you? Well, it's it's awesome because it's – um. It's, it, it's very comforting knowing that you're in a place that you love and a place that respects and values you as well. You know what I mean? You're not always looking for the next big gig and stuff like that. And you can settle in. You can be a part of the community. It makes life so much more enjoyable. Uh, the kids are stable. You know what I mean? You don't have to bounce around. You don't have to do all that stuff. It makes life so much easier on everybody involved. And it's just it, – I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, I And I – joke around every now and then when a job opens up with my wife and I'm like, Hey, you know, years ago, North Carolina job opened up. She's I'm like, you want to go to North Carolina? She's like, Nope. <laughs> she's Good like, right here. Yeah. Yep. She's a Jersey girl. You know, she loves it here. And Oh man, there you go. There comes that pride. There comes that like, yeah, that's exactly right. Oh man. They are into Jersey. They're into, <laughs> Oh, I got to give you one. Are you ready? Here it comes. <laughs> Got to do it. You know I got to do that. Come on. Absolutely. Come on, I got to do it. Um, hey, the whole reason I <laughs> had you on was for you to preview the Ryder Bronx for the Mid-American Conference. Let's do it. You want to start at 125 for me and tell me who you got potentially? All right. So, most likely our starter will be Tyler Klinsky. Uh, he's a freshman this year. Uh, well, a COVID freshman. So, he, um, he did wrestle a couple matches for us last year. Had, uh, had a decent year. Um, but with Tropea graduating and moving on, um, who's applying to be a state trooper in, in the state of New Jersey. Um, and Tyler has had a very good summer, productive summer. He's a two-time, uh, two-time state final state champ. And, uh, he's just, he's good. He's good. He's going to be a little young and experienced, but he can wrestle. He can absolutely wrestle. Do you have any, is there depth there? Or is he the only guy? There's some depth, but it's not, you know, uh, I'm kind of hoping that he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> kind of hoping he doesn't get hurt. So you got guys behind him though. You do have guys that. Yeah. That yeah. But not kids, not kids of that caliber, but they're great kids. They work hard, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. So if he needs a match off or something like that, we can afford him. 133. Returning national qualifier, Richie Kohler. Um, had, has gotten bigger, gotten better, had a good summer. Um, went 0 two at the NCAA tournament. Had a great MAC tournament uh, last year, made the finals, um, and has three years remaining. And, and we expect big things from him. He's starting to figure out wrestling at a, at a better and higher level every year. So he's – you got to remember, he came in at 33 when we had Anthony Cephalo and Chris, uh, Chris Wright, and he was an afterthought in our third guy at the weight class. Well, he put basically both of them out of the sport. Cephalo had injuries, and Chris Wright just – just never had the passion that Richie had and Richie's put himself in there and he's never looked back, you know? So I expect big things from Richie this year. So he's a returning national qualifier on two of the tournament yes. last year, 141. Uh, we're probably, this one could be up in the air a little bit. We probably, if, if, if Quinn Kinner gets certified and can make it effectively, he'll be our 41 pounder. Quinn is a, an Ohio state transfer. Yes. He's an Ohio state transfer. But he's, he's a Jersey guy. Players. He is a two-time New Jersey State champ, yes. Okay, so Quinn Kenner, he was at like 57 for him or something, wasn't he? Well, he was also at 33, if you remember. That's he right. Was he went up to like 50, yeah. Yeah, he was anywhere in, the, in between because he, would, he just wanted to be in the lineup so bad. So he would, have, he would have morphed himself into anything just to be in that lineup. And he found himself in there quite, quite a bit. Yeah, um, I remember seeing him. But he's, he's probably weighing out like upper 40s right now. So he's, he's on striking distance for it. So if he is able to do it and be successful there, you know, I don't want to make him, you know, the weight, the, 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 the sport. So we have to see how they, he handles that and balances that. This is our first real time with Quinn. So we're just getting to know each other. We're, we're off to a great start, but we're just getting to know him. Say Quinn um, can't make the weight. Who else could be at 41? Well, we have a returning national qualifier in, in Mackenzie Bell, who will redshirt if Quinn makes the weight. If not, it'll be – Mackenzie Bell at uh, 141. That's Who a good was, problem. Good problem. Yeah, the, yeah, the kid that what beat Hart in uh, the semis last year from Missouri. Wow, wow. Yeah, and he's a tough kid. 
How about 49? Might be an Ohio guy. It'll be between our, our guy from last year that was that represented us in the MAC, Wyatt um, McCarthy, who's from um, up North Jersey, or from Beaver Local, Cole McComas might be our 49 pounder. Was he from uh, Beaver, Buckeye, uh, Beaver Local? Beaver Local. He was a three time state finalist. Is Nick's wife from Beaver Local? Yes. She's got a, a, a storefront out there with her, uh, with her fashion. Oh, man. Let me see if I can draw the name on the, the Cherokee Child. Is Cherokee sold. Child. I was going to yep. say it. <laughs> but with two E's. The with two E's, Cherokee uh, Child. And it's, she just opened up another store in uh, Medford, which is a town between Nick and I. Nick lives in Mount Laurel. We live in Marlton. Medford's right between the two of us. And she has another store from there. She's doing okay. She's killing it. Yeah, 100%. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that you got a potential Ohio guy in the mix there. I uh, state runner up at Ohio. Yes. Pretty tough three kid. Times. Yeah, really tough kid. And he got really COVID. tough. Kid. He got the COVID yes. year. He got the COVID. He didn't get the Russell's senior year. Yes, correct. He, and he, he, um, he could have been there. He is such a quiet kid. He's a 3.6 GPA and he's a hard worker and he is going to be good. So listen, I went and these guys are from the Ohio River Valley that I met. Uh, I didn't right. meet him, but I, I knew him. There's a guy that's from that area. Um, have you ever heard of Max Effort? It's a supplement. Mm, what's it again max effort yeah 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 and then the 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 guy who's at that owns max effort one of the owners he used to own muscle farm oh, okay his name's Corey gregory and then dustin myers dustin myers is the guy who trains a lot of the ohio rtc guys and um uh he trains a, a ton of people but yeah Corey gregory Corey gregory and dustin myers they're from that area they're from right Corey. around where cole's Crazy. from the big thing people do, they're steel workers or coal miners. Or they work in an auto factory, right? So it is a gritty, tough, blue-collar area, John. And coal typifies that completely. He doesn't say a word, but you can never, ever see him dog it. You can, he's always pushing it. He's, he just He's there all the time doing his thing. These guys are insane. <laughs> they're yeah. 42 and 43, and they're still working out like they're 20. Yeah, I see some of those videos and stuff. They're, they're crazy. Insane. I was it's there wrong. yesterday. I was there. I was Wait, at really? School. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went I went to the gym. They gave me some swag, too. I got a really cool max effort. Uh, they hooked me up with a, a, a windbreaker. They gave me a shirt, and I just, you know, talked to Corey, talked to Coach Myers, and they're just, like, awesome guys, and they're training high school kids up. And they, they just jumped off a cliff too, man. They jumped or they moved their uh, whole operation, geez, 30 miles east. Closed, closed the member, the gym to members. They, they were like, hey, we're, if we don't, you're a member. We're, we're, they cut all their members. That's crazy. And they're just training wrestling people and training the, their, their guys. And they're, That's they're awesome. Good for them. Yeah. And I think they're just, they're doing really well. But that Cole is from the same area. Yes. Yes. And, and it, you, you can see it. They're just great. Schmitty, this guy who I used to work with, Corner Rugs guy. <laughs> Schmitty's another Ohio River Valley guy, man. They're just like these gritty, <laughs> find a way type dudes. And I kind of like that about the Ohio River Valley. You know, they're Absolutely. underdogs. They're underdogs. Nice and you gotta like them. All right. 57. 157. Who the Bronx going to come up? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You only got to replace the guy who's got the greatest finish in, in rider history and Jesse Delavecchia. Coach. I don't know how you're going to do this one, but sorry to delve into this, but Jesse did have a COVID year. What happened with Jesse not coming back for the COVID year? Uh, we had a conversation. I know Nick had a lot of conversations with him. We had conversations with his parents. Um, at the time, he did not want to do it. He just didn't want – he understood the commitment level it took to get to the finals and the, and the, the toll it takes mentally and physically. And he had done that for two years and he wanted to do something different. Um, he wasn't a big fan of school, even though he was in graduate school this past year, he just wasn't a big fan in school. So that was kind of one of the driving forces and he wanted to start making money. So he just decided to get into the coaching. Is he at West point? He is. He is. Yeah. So, so here, I just want to talk about this real quick. I think people, once again, another out of touch thing with wrestling uh, media, wrestling people. 
they don't get how hard <laughs> D1 wrestling is. No idea. They just don't get it. And if you look, John, why our guys dominate MMA, why the D1 and D2 guys go and they dominate, you know, JUCO guys, D3 guys, all our guys, NAI guys, whatever. Look at the amount of weigh-ins you guys do in a season. Yeah. You guys are doing one-hour weigh-ins for the duels, two hours for yeah. the tournaments. Your NCAA yep. tournament's a three-day weigh-in. Yep. Back to back to back, and they give you a pound every day now, though, don't they? They do, yes. Yeah, so you're weighing, if you're 57, you're weighing in at 59 the last day, right? Yes. First yes. off, if you're weighing in at 159, I don't care what you weigh, you're making weight. Yeah. <laughs> you're making weight. You're, you're, you're doing the third weigh-in, you're making weight. You're making weight. No you're a corpse you the are. next day. You're making weight. We, I, you and yes. I know that, right? 100%. Uh, but I just don't think people really get how hard this is. I don't think it, they really understand just how hard it is. And I was a 500 guy, man. I was a 500 guy. No, but it doesn't it, matter the record. It, it has no bearing. You still had a total commitment mentally yes. and physically, and it wears you down. And when you get a chance to catch your breath, and you don't know that till the end, that's the most relieving exhale sometimes because you're like, ah, oh. like all those qualities that you just mentioned all carry over into what you do next. But it's just, it consumes your everyday life. And if you don't do it that way, you don't have a chance of being an all American. And that's what we value that we just, we said that in the very beginning, that's what everybody's valued on. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. That was the first question, right? Well, you're an all American. Yeah. What place? What division? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I, I just, yeah, I don't think, I just don't think the casual, I mean, the casual media wrestling, if you didn't wrestle D1, I'm not saying you got to be a D1 guy to be a wrestling fan. I'm not saying you got to be a D1 guy to be a wrestling media guy. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. One of the best guys I've ever worked with is this guy named Ian McCutcheon. Guy didn't wrestle, but he's from Easton PA. He has a okay. passion for it. He's excellent at it, right? I don't, I'm not one of those snobs. That's not what I'm saying, right? Right, right. But I just don't think a lot of people really get it. They don't. I really just don't think they get it. And I think that's what's annoying about some media to some teams, right? They're sure. like, this guy, he never did this. He doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, it, they, it's almost they, like they don't know the right questions to ask. Sometimes. Yeah, and they like, I think that that would be one thing I'd say, like, you know, Mark Bader, Mark Bader, he wrestled at Mizzou. Mark Bader <laughs> wrestled in a bunch of Big 12 tournaments. Mark Bader. He gets it. You know, he understands the grind. I've never it. heard an awkward question come from Bader in any of the interviews. No, because Mark Bader gets he, it. Mark Bader yes. really gets it. He understands it. Yes. There are other people who maybe don't get it like Mark Bader gets it or like I get it. Right. Because they've never had, you know, I remember being a redshirt freshman just getting absolutely yeah. pounded for a month, dude. And I was like, yeah. is this going to get any better? This is terrible. Yeah. But you turn the corner and you figure it out, right? You, you, you sink yep. or swim, right? And you see really good guys who, who were really good. That breaks some guys, man. That breaks some of the good guys, too. And you know They're that. They're not willing to redefine themselves or go no. back to work to, to no. reinvent themselves. No, and they were killing everybody in their high school room. They were killing everybody at the tournaments. Yep. And that's the crapshoot for you guys when you get a really high-level guy who's never really experienced failure. Yep. You need to have be able to deal with adversity because if you don't, if you've never experienced it, you're not going to succeed in college. You're going to struggle. Yes. You're going to struggle and you might be back home at the gas station. Yep. Yep. Now, now they just pay you not to work. So whatever. <laughs> Maybe you'd just be hanging out in my dad's basement. Right. I mean, there's just so many <laughs> bad routes you can go with it and, so true. You can get squirt. and being humbled is a good thing. I think that's a great, really great it thing is. about the sport, getting the tar kicked out of you. You know where you're at, right? So, okay. How do you replace 157? I don't know. Like, yeah. So, obviously, Jesse was the first ever national finals, the only non-Power 5 kid in the finals last year. That's an unbelievable year for us, right? But we got his high school, like, friend slash, you know, former, you know, opponent, competitor who went to Nebraska, Jake Silverstein, who was a national qualifier at 165 last year, who's dropping down to 157. Okay. Jake has three years left for us. So Jake is very, very good. Obviously, he has room that he needs to grow in to become Jesse because that's, that's an elite level. But he's on the right path. and he's, he's kind of following the lead that Jesse did. And if you remember, Jesse was behind Chad Walsh for a year, mm -hmm. okay, because he was, he was not eligible with his transfer credits. 
Then the, the next year he wrestled 65. And then after that, we realized he was a little bit too small for that weight. And we went down a weight, but we did the same thing this year. I told Jake, you had to go 65 this year because Jesse's a senior and it's 57 and it's his spot. We're not going to even challenge him on that. Then we realized that NCAA's Jake was too small for 57. So when Jesse decided, or 65, when Jesse decided he wasn't coming back, we made that conscious decision with Jake in the, in the conversation to go 57. And he'll have a much more successful, consistent year at 57. He'll be good down, down there. You know, when you look at uh, – there, there's a huge size difference. If you look at a 57 compared to a 65, it well, is wild. Think about this. Jake Silverstein qualifies for the national tournament. His two matches at the national tournament were the kid from Missouri, O'Toole, and Monday from the, from North Carolina. Jeez, oh, Pete. Monday is massive. massive. Monday yes. is – Monday 6-2. Yeah. He's and huge. Jake is strong, but it didn't matter. They just were bigger yeah. people. They smother you. They crush you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. man. Wow. So, you, you drop, you're dropping uh, Silverstein down to yeah. 57. 57, okay. yes. Okay, yep. who's going to replace him at 65 then? So, we're looking at – a combination of two guys. It'll be one of two guys. It'll be Angel Garcia, who was our 74 last year, um, who was the four seed at the MAC tournament, but went 0 and 2. He'll drop to 65, and or Joe Casey, who was our 57 two years ago, uh, will be moved up to 65 because he knew Jake was going down, so he built into a 65 pounder. So it'll be one of those two guys at uh, at that weight. Okay, and then is one of them going to uh, migrate up to 74 then? No, there's also another kid in there that, that'll push both of them. It's Mike Wilson, a uh, no-name kid from North Harden. This kid had a losing record in high school as a freshman, ended up being the third seed in place in the state tournament as a senior. Wow. Yeah. That's, it's just, there you go. That's a rider guy you make your money on. That's yep. what I'm talking He's about. Sheer, you say a no-name guy. Yeah. That's a rider guy. That's a rider guy. And it's sheer grit and determination for this kid. He's, and he's working his ass off, so he's doing good. All right, so is he going to be 74? Is he in the mix at 65? No, he's in the mix at 65. So Shane Reitzma, who was a red shirt for us last year, he wasn't as ready as Angel Garcia was last year, but Shane has had an unbelievable summer, and he will be our 74 pounder this year. None of the – neither Mac finalists, there's nobody returning at 174. No. It's wide open because left and McNally transferred out. Yes. Yes. So 74 is wide open. It's somebody. Wide open. Yeah, wide open. Absolutely. So so that's one where you got to really get in that guy's head and be like, hey, man, you got to believe you can win this. There's, this is yeah, 100%. Win. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. up until that weight class, we don't have a single junior or senior in the lineup, potentially in the starting lineup. They're all sophomores or freshmen. The first eight weights or seven weights. Wow. Once again, great problem to have. Great problem to have. Our futures, you know, we're going to grow from the first date to last date this year, and we'll have them together for a long time. 184. George Walton was there uh, last couple of years for us. He had the takedown against the Missouri kid, and I don't care what Missouri says. I can show you the film. He had the takedown at the end of the buzzer, and they didn't give it to him. And he should have been in the finals. And then he couldn't recover mentally, and he lost a couple matches that he would have met. He won't lose them the, this year. So, He's, uh, he's training hard. He's doing well. He's got two years left for us. He's, uh, he's going to do well this year. 197. We talked Matt Carrenti into coming back to school. He is a sixth-year senior because of COVID. He's in graduate school. He graduated undergrad. And he is uh, training probably with the most passion I've ever seen him train with. And he is, uh, he's going to be a legit threat at 97. Once again, another weight where you can, you can bust it wide open, man. You can bust it wide open at 97. Like, that's another he way probably, where – He should probably be the second preseason-ranked kid in the MAC uh, there during the preseason. You just, they got to know. Those, those guys got to believe. They have to have a belief. Yes. 74, 97, they, they absolutely have to believe. We, listen, man, the only odds-on favorite yeah. would be, what, stencil at heavyweight? Absolutely. I mean, stencil, but I think your guy can your guy can roll with stencil. Well, we're redshirting him. Laird's Laird's a redshirt. La Laird's gonna redshirt. He so got mullet. Still got mullet. 
No. <laughs> got, got, got mustache? His mom said, before you go back to school, you're not leaving. You're not allowed to go back to school unless you get a haircut. So he got a haircut. How do you steal a guy out of Edinburgh? <laughs> Straight out from Edinburgh and brought him over to Ryder, New Jersey. And he'll never go back. He's a Jersey kid now. I love it. So what are you doing with – okay, so what are you going to do in heavyweight then? Uh, Zuba. David Zuba will be the uh, the heir apparent. So it's so we're going to red, red, wrestle Zuba, redshirt Ethan, and flip him. And then when Ethan graduates, Ethan, Ethan's going in, into the MBA program. He's going to get his master's in business administration. So in two years, he'll be done. And then uh, Zuba will have three years remaining after that. Do you love the parody in the Mid-American Conference coming up this year? It's like, you know, you got to give, you got to give Stencil the heavy favorite at, at heavyweight. And besides that, who's the other super duper heavy fa- Simon at 41? Maybe. Maybe. Right? Simon stuff. Unless uh, Kendrick Kinder going to roll down there. Yeah, but like you look at it, you got to love your chances at every weight, right? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, 25, 25, the, uh, what do you call it? It's not coming back. Uh, Hildebrand. Hildebrand. Hildebrand's not coming yeah. back, right? He's done. But, but Ferry I, and um, um, uh, the kid from Lock Haven are pretty tough, though. Yeah, Werner. With Werner. Yeah. I love it. I But like sitting and, and discussing this with you, you oh, got to feel confident, man, right? No, we do. We do. I mean, we're going to have to train our butts off and then everything's going to have to go our way. But it's, it's it, like you said, every, every school should be saying that to their kids. This is your chance. There's not a Missouri in the weight class. There's not a hammer in the weight class other than heavyweight. You got a chance to get, win the conference and get to the national tournament. And that's the incentive. Yeah. 97, uh, 97, you had some guys transfer out. I mean, 97, anybody can win that weight. 74, anybody can win that weight. Yep, yep. You had Volsack get out. And you yeah, had, Volsack uh, went to, what, Rutgers? And the, and the Missouri guy, yeah, Missouri. Yeah, yeah. oh, my God. Like, now that I, it's like I'm thinking more about it, I'm like, oh, my God, there's really some opportunities to make some noise. And what is your threshold this year for matches? 14, it was 17 in the past. Is it 14, John? Uh, for the RPI? Yeah. I think they're going to go back to 17. They are. I think. Wow. I think they're going to go back to normal. That's that's my understanding. Because it was 17 for, for as long as they had the system yes. implemented, I yes. believe. And this past year, they moved it to, what, five or six or something wow. like that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think they're going to go back to uh, – as long as things continue to stay the same. Because right now, everybody's got a normal schedule. Uh, everybody's planning on a normal season. So unless things change, um, we'll, we'll probably go back to 17. Do you think the Ivy Leagues will wrestle? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I do. I do. I think um, Princeton's being conservative in the sense that they're not hosting uh, a big tournament, but they're allowed to host uh, matches. Um, and I don't know much about Penn, but I, I do know, you know, a little bit because I'm, you know, we're close to a Princeton guy. Um, but they, they should definitely have uh, a season this year. All right. I, that gives I hope me they confidence. Kids deserve it. No. Yeah, man. Cause those guys don't get those years back. The Alcama nope. doesn't get, Nope. Chance to be a four-time NCAA champ, and nope. I just it makes me sick to think that it does. We could never see Ben Darmstadt again. That we could never see so many of these guys. Is Kolioko? Kolioko's a pen, isn't he? Yes. Is so Kolioko's you you know as well as I do, they make that tournament tougher. I mean, the kids that yeah. Princeton has, Penn has, Cornell has, yes. all those items make it tougher. Yes. So they, you want they, them there? Yes, you want them there. Uh, yeah, man, I want the Ivies to wrestle it. I'm not gonna like bog you down with this because it really it's very um it bothers me a little bit but i mean i i really want him to wrestle but um me too. at the end of the day is there any doubt in your mind that the Ryder bronx can't bring home a mid-american conference title to new jersey there's no doubt in my mind like i said earlier we're gonna have to train our kids right put them in position to, to win and things are gonna have to go our way because it's us and probably four or five other teams that are thinking the exact same thing. So um, it all depends on who hits it right and who's healthy and, you know, if luck falls their way, but you make your own luck in my opinion. So it's, it's an opportunity that we have in front of us. And if we didn't do it this year, we're going to be hard to knock off just because we're young. We're really, young. I mean, Zuba's a freshman. So that makes eight freshmen and sophomores in my starting lineup. And there's teams that we're not mentioning that I'm not mentioning, like George Mason. They've They're made good. huge strides, man. They've gotten a lot better. 
There's yeah. teams like, you know, Cleveland State's gotten a lot better. And, you know, two guys punched their way into the finals last year. Yep. They got yep. a qualifier coming back at 49 and 97. I mean, and they got guys who are right there too, man. Like, they can they can make noise too. So, Northern Illinois is really good. Yes, they are. Yes, they oh, are. Oh, my they're God. They're really good, actually. Yes, they are. I People we, sleeping on what's going on in DeKalb. That, they're doing a tremendous – I mean – Ludwig is doing a tremendous job in, in DeKalb, Illinois, and I'm impressed with them. They're really good, actually. Yeah, we have them early this year. We're the, they're our second date. We are have them November 13th at home. That's a landmine, dude. That they're is. sneaky good. The dudes they are big. Are they cut weight. I like them. They train hard. They're in good shape. They, uh, they wrestle hard. I got a returning All-American. And their 65 is real good. Their head yeah. is good. They got a transfer 97 that's good. They're, yeah. They're, they're, they're very balanced up and down the lineup. And then obviously we already mentioned, you know, Central. So Yeah, they're just they're I mean, just steady. Central, Central, man. They're just so yeah, steady. Exactly. That you know what you're they're, getting. The dudes are yep. good. They attack both sides of the body. Tough on top. Obviously yep. everybody can get off the mat. They follow the game plan. You know, and it's just – they're top. No, they're well coached. They're, they're well coached. Well-coached. That guy's one of the best coaches in the country, Tom Brelli. So – all right. Do you got anything else for me? Uh, no, I think we're good. We're good? We're good. No, I want to, you know, hey, you know my head assistant. I love him to death. We all do. He's one of the best ones out there, in my opinion. I, th- I don't think – I would put him up against any head assistant in the entire country. What did Nick Budland tell you about the time when he poured – a can of paint in my Well, eye. Nick is a quick storyteller. He doesn't te- to say long stories, but he's like, Zeb wanted to kill us because we were messing around and then all of a sudden it poured in his eye and he was like, it was burning. It was, and, and, and we just get, we were laughing. <laughs> Him and Keith <laughs> Witt. So hold on. Let me tell you the scam that Nick had going. He was like, I can't get on a ladder. Uh, you know, where you got to get on the ladder. I can't do it. I can't do his accent. But anyhow, he's like, I just, I'm afraid of heights. And wit, wit, wit should have been like, screw you, dude, get on the ladder. You know, I paid him. I paid him money. It wasn't like it was like free. Too Um, funny. And, and, um, wit was dumb enough to get on the ladder and do all the ladder work. Well, badly on stood on the ground. At one point, I think he was running around. Like, he's just a goofball. No, no a goofball. shirt. I got a picture I'll send. <laughs> got a picture I'll send. I want to see it. I got my want house. To see it. Um, okay. Last thing. I was talking to you about my team yeah. that's about to lose their name. Right? Yep. Are you a Yankees fan? No. What are you? Pirates. God, sure. Okay, you're a PA guy. How are you not a Phillies fan? Because uh, they, um, when I was growing up, the Steelers were winning everything. First 10 years of my life, they won four um, Super Bowls. So I just drifted everything to Pittsburgh. And they're just a championship city that the Pirates are good. Obviously, the Penguins yeah. are great. Yep. The that 70s makes sense. Were- uh, yeah, that yep. makes sense. And the, they were probably delivering the media yep. out to Quaker Town, right? Yep. Hey, William Penn was a Quaker, if you didn't know. I did know that. So, so, okay, I'm going to give you – I told you the story earlier. Um, but my kids are going to go to Kenston High School. Well, my son actually goes to – that's a K-12 through campus, right? Okay. So, directly across the street from Kenston, the campus, is uh, – it's called Auburn Lakes. Okay. So, um, I got a hot tip that uh, Larry Dolan lives across the street in Auburn Lakes. He's you were saying owner. one of your buddies told you, right? Yeah, somebody told me, somebody tipped me off. That that's not important. So I was like, what's his house like? And I couldn't. It was like it's just an average house. So my students looked it up, and Larry Dolan's <laughs> net worth is four point six billion dollars. They bought the team for three hundred and thirty they bought the Cleveland Indians for three hundred and thirty million dollars. They're worth like one point three billion now. He lives in like a condominium. That's crazy. Type complex. It's not. Hold on. It's almost like they're they're bigger houses, but some of them I want to say are split. It's because that's where I used to mail my uh, mortgage from. So once oh, okay. I figured out he lived there, it's the closest <laughs> mailbox. You know, I I just started putting all the windows down. 
and yelling, sell the team! Sell the team! <laughs> and my wife just, we did it last week, and she was like, what? We oh, dropped. she was in a car with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One time she was, yeah. And my kids were sitting back in their seats, and they were coming from soccer, and she was just like, what's wrong She's with you? just like sinking down in his uh, seats. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Oh, they just put it on the Yankees, though, and they've been playing good ball, like you pointed out. But, I mean, yeah. listen, listen. See if I got – I got to see – oh, sorry. Sorry. As soon as the name change uh, occurs, know. you know we're, we know we're the Guardians, right? Yeah. But a roller derby team is also named the Guardians in Cleveland, so now they got to buy the name off of them. Oh, no. Why did they do that? Because they're stupid. Yeah. Because when I you when you got billions, it's not like you would have people go research who owns that name or anything, right? Yeah, no, that would that would cost too much money. So my guy Josh, Barbarian, Barbarian Apparel, they're out they're out of uh Cincinnati. Yeah. Bought me a couple uh he bought me oh he didn't buy me this one. I bought this one. But he's trying to lure Wahoo, you. When, next year when it comes to cheering, I'll be cheering for the minor leagues, which is you're you're a minor league fan. Um yep. They let the pitchers bat. Yeah. <laughs> National League, you know. A little National League trash talk there. But uh yeah, yeah. Hey man, thank you for coming on. Uh for people who don't know, Ryder is in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. This is John Hanji, Coach Hanji. Thank you for the time. Good luck to you guys in the Ryder Bronx this year in the Mid American Conference. We'll see you in Detroit at the NCAA tournament. Stick around, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Zeb. I appreciate you having us. Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.